Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, A Grand Arena Story. It's another joyous day in the 3v3 universe of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I'm excited to show you guys this match because there are some counters that I haven't used before. There's one in particular that is a lot of fun, actually, and I, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna do some freeze frames and just show you guys the mechanics at work. It, it, that's gonna be exciting. Uh, it involves Vader lead, so uh, check that out. And uh, otherwise, my opponent has Ultimate Ray, and she provides some trouble. There, there's, she's a sticking point, so. Uh, there, there's a lot going on in this episode, in this video, and I'm excited to show it to you guys. So, uh, enjoy. Before we start, I just want to give a huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate you supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. Alright, so check this out. Uh, at the start of my match, I was in position 1337, which is an important number for gamers. That same day, at about the same time, I hit that number subscribers as well, so um, <laughs> it must be an omen or something. But as we've seen from the Sandlot, that is not necessarily always a good thing, so uh, there is that. So, faced off against a new dude named Mafor de Gux, or something similar, something annoying, and um, so that was great. He also had ultimate ray which is similarly annoying and uh, looking at our stats here for just a minute my opponent does have more high-end mods than i do uh, or rather relics than i do uh, in every category at the top they have me beat and I, I have a bunch of lower level relics so there's that i guess um otherwise i have more gear 13 characters than my opponent uh same gear 12 basically and then my mods are significantly better so uh you know mods mods are probably my favorite tell and how i'm going to be doing in a match usually or what to expect uh looking at this match from the start my opponent of course deployed ultimate ray because why wouldn't you deploy ultimate ray on defense that just makes sense uh, and then some geonotions which I, you know it's like are they trying to draw out my treya i i don't know but i'm uh, probably going to use them anyways and then up top they have a padme squad without anakin so i wasn't sure quite what they were doing with that overall the, these teams didn't seem too hard U obviously ultimate ray was going to be very difficult and uh, my buddy Kleso has had a lot of luck in using Supreme Leader Kylo to take out Ultimate Race, so I figured I'd I'd jump in with that, use Hux and Thrawn. It's worked for other people as well, not just uh, Kleso. So uh, what, what you're trying to do, you stun Finn, and then the hope is that you can stun Poe before he stuns uh, your Thrawn, and maybe I got the order wrong or something, I, I don't know, I, <laughs> I couldn't stun him, he, he stunned Thrawn before I could get a turn with Hux, so, uh, that, that was a huge, huge, uh, frustrating thing, and then Thrawn, of course, died before he could do anything, and at this point, we're trying to get as many crits as we can with this team, trying to build up my ultimate before Rey gets her ultimate, and obviously I'm not making much progress there, so I try to do basics here so I can get two crits at once, and uh, so she puts up her ultimate. I still have two hits I need to do, so if I can't get a turn after I do this hit, then I'm probably screwed. So I did two hits, got my ultimate ready, and then Ray came along and said, no thank you, you will die now. And uh, so that wasn't something I was particularly grateful for. And really, the only option now, I have to use the old uh, attempt to uh, just... We're, we're using worthless characters to make Ray use her lifeblood and you know I've shown you guys this before in the past freeze frame for just a sec you see she uses lifeblood at the very start and now that she used lifeblood uh, now now it, the doors are open we can actually take her out because she can't use her whirlwind ability she can't uh, she won't necessarily have damage immunity on her uh, so it depends on how she does at the very start uh, Poe goes and then Ray, of course, goes and heals past the 50%, so now she can have damage immunity again. And, uh, yeah, so we're, we're using Jedi Training Ray, of course. Uh, 
rather, Jedi Knight Revan here, and we have General Skywalker. All of that madness. Uh, she she's got damage immunity. I'm I, at this point. I'm just praying that I can take her out before she gets her ultimate. If she gets her ultimate up, we are probably completely screwed. Uh, but as it stands. It, she, she isn't as resilient as all of that. General Skywalker is modded for his uh, speed and, uh, more importantly, for offense. So he does a huge amount of damage, and under Revan he does even more because of all the various uh, boosts that Revan provides. So uh, now we're, we're sitting pretty. We just got to finish off Poe. Finn isn't even here to offer any resistance. Har har. And... Uh, yeah, happy enough with with this segment of my takedown of Ray. Obviously, I, I I used two my two very best teams on that one team, so didn't really feel like a great trade. Uh, at this point, I was hoping that there wasn't anything too crazy in the back. Uh, you know, General Skywalker or Darth Revan could severely derail me at this point. And uh, so we got to move on, though. And the next up is these this Geonosian team. They are all relic. And I just took these two characters here. There are my, my two Sith here are relic uh, three. And, you know, that that's generally enough against Geonosians. As long as Spy doesn't get too big of a hit on Scion at some point, uh, or, you know, if, if Scion can avoid the crit or something like that, you put Isolate on the Brood, and then uh, after that, he can't, he can't do anything, he can't taunt, and uh, apparently Spy <laughs> could get a big hit on Scion, kill him, and... Uh, so now I'm, I'm making it fast because this is a an extremely long, awkward battle. And honestly, the the whole time I, I just want to point out here. I, I tried various things. I tried to put isolate on brood, uh, or brute, and that, or rather, I took it off of him and put it back on spy to reduce cooldowns. And you'll notice that spy never once does her or his uh, big hit on me. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I don't know. I'm wondering if they're waiting for me to have uh, debuffs on me or something like that. But uh, Treya keeps dispelling them, and so Spy just keeps not using their big hit. It was available. I never reduced cooldowns enough for it to go away. But uh, yeah, one way or another, it, it was a long, drawn-out, awkward, and almost deadly fight uh, and then of course the client must be restarted I restarted and happy enough that that fight did actually count so that was good and now we have uh, Night Sisters team we need to take out we're gonna use uh, Kylo Ren and First Order Executioner because that that squad is good it can take out other teams but at this point you know it, it would be nice to use my Padme squad against this team so I could get a bunch of attempts with with Anakin to get to apply healing immunity, but uh, that that isn't really in the cards at this point. I just used two of my best teams to take out this squad. I do not want, or rather, to take out the ultimate race squad. I do not want to spend more time trying to, uh, or rather, spend more good squads trying to take out a, a mid tier squad. Uh, you know that this nice sisters team does need a credible. Uh, team to be able to beat it and one thing i'll point out is you know it, i had the option to use bounty hunters here i wanted to save them for other things just in case they're a little more versatile in uh in 3v3 and you know i, I love this kylo ren team it, it's also i i was feeling the crunch for banners at this point i i had a pretty messy win with Treya. I had three messy losses against Ultimate Ray before I finished her off, and even that, I only got uh, the the banners for full health, not for protection. So, uh, anyways, the, this battle, I've, I've done it a ton of times for you guys. I've explained it a lot. I'll, I'll just go over it quickly. Uh, if you put the weapons tech on Executioner, it denies revives on everyone but Zombie, and uh, if you put the taunting tech on Kylo first, then uh, that taunting tech is uh, going to make all of the Night Sisters only hit him, basically, uh, keeping Executioner and Watt mostly intact. Watt can, of course, dispel with his basic. He can dispel 
the uh, stuns that Daka can get through. So really not a challenge, especially in 3v3. 54 banners every time. And at this point, I'm praying, please don't have anything crazy in the back. And of course, I see Grievous there. So that, that made me feel nervous. Uh, but otherwise, everything else there is somewhat tame. The, the Newt squad kind of... Uh, scared me. You can see the teams on the right here. If you want to pause it or something, you can see all the teams I have to face. Uh, but the, there's this Padme squad. It's all Relic 7, all really, really strong. And so I've had success with Nest in the past. I wanted Kira here to provide protection for Nest. And what, what end up, ends, up, ends up happening is uh, Padme generates so many stacks of uh, protection and uh, you know, that this team just has a ton of buffs that uh, Nest does a ton of, uh, she stacks a ton of damage. And what, what ended up happening here, though, this is 3v3, so it's different. Instead of the whole team having huge numbers of stacks here of, uh, of their uh, different various protections and buffs being dispelled and going away, only three characters worth is going away. And so you can see we're already in minute one. I've fast forwarded a little bit and now we're in, uh, you know, we're, we're in the last 15 seconds, and I've made no inroads at all against these characters. None at all. Uh, the closest I got was about 50% on Padme, and I don't know. I, I, if I had had Hermit Yoda here, maybe things would have been different, but I think 3v3 just fundamentally changes this counter, or, I mean, maybe I'm just doing it wrong. So, frustrating. I got another loss. This <laughs> They're just piling up. At this point, we've dropped 50 total banners from losses, so... Uh, not looking pretty. That, so this, because I beat the Padme squad or lost to the Padme squad, it meant I needed to have uh, use my own Padme squad to counter theirs. Not going to be pretty. So that meant I needed uh, to use Commander Luke against this General Grievous squad. This squad is not the strongest Grievous squad. I think it's only Relic Four on Grievous. So um, you know, not not the absolute strongest. Uh, you want to take out B2 first if you can, uh, and then after that, if you can afford it, just take out Grievous as I just did there. Um, and he was full health, he, he was pretty strong. Uh, my Commander Luke team just does a lot of damage, and frankly, I, I was surprised at how easily I handled it. 52 banners is pretty good. Um, I don't know how consistent it is, I haven't done a lot of testing, but that... That was a pretty effort-free win, honestly. <laughs> that was pretty easy. So uh, because I was able to take out Grievous with Commander Luke, that left my Padme squad open to do the ugly, ugly mirror against their Padme squad, and then I would be out of meta teams. So, uh, you know, the hope is that I'd be able to take out the rest of the teams. There are a lot of tricky teams, though there aren't any more meta teams uh, that I have to take out. So... This is actually a kind of cool Padme team to have on defense because they are tough to kill regardless because Kenobi's tough to kill, Padme's tough to kill, they're all maxed out on health, uh, just really hard to take out, and uh, Soka can do a lot of damage, she's dispelling, Courage does a huge amount of damage, so... You know, it, it's it's a really, it's cool, and and you get Anakin available for uh, offense. That There's a lot of great things about this, so something to keep in mind. I'm, I'm going to be keeping it in mind. Um, one thing I do want to point out here, so we're trying to get stacks of courage. We're trying to, uh, you know, if we can, just one-shot Kenobi or something, that will be great. If we can't, then, you know, we need to find other things. One thing to point out, though, is sometimes you need to use Padme specials you know they're, they're great all of her moves are great all of her abilities uh, the one thing I want to point out though is sometimes you just want to use her basic even when she has specials available so uh, you can see she shot with her basic her basic first off doesn't miss so if they have if they have foresight up she still shoots through that also, she when she shoots with her basic, she gives stacks of protection up to the rest of her team, which in turn 
uh, makes them, uh, you know, gives them stacks of courage and all of that. It, it's a great ability. Don't neglect her basic. I know that sounds foolish, but there it is. Uh, now, one thing that I will point out is uh, Newt teams have been getting the most defense by far, according to my buddy Clash at the Scoundrel Discord. He's been aggregating data and all of that, and uh, so Newt teams are not to be taken lightly. And so, of course, I took this Newt team with Watt and uh, Magnagard, which is a ridiculously tough team to actually beat, and took my Vader team. So I've been enjoying this team quite a bit, and I wanted to freeze frame for a minute and just kind of explain the mechanics of what's going on here. Um, we want to abuse the uh, permanent debuffs from Vader alongside the Stormtrooper Han Taunt with turn meter gain and Nihilus's not only Annihilate, but his ability to increase cooldowns, which is key. So uh, Vader goes, puts permanent debuffs on everyone, which can't be dispelled, and then after that we have Nihilus going, and it's important here, he needs to... Uh, increase cooldowns on everyone, so he does. Stormtrooper Han then goes, and the, the reason it's important is we don't want Newt to be able to dispel Stormtrooper Han. So now they're all going to be hitting Han, and every time they hit Han, the whole team gains a bunch of turn meter. And so uh, immediately, you know, Nihilus gets another turn, he gets another force drain, and uh, they keep hitting Han, they keep giving the whole team turn meter, and I get an Annihilate, like, right away, really fast. Uh, keep increasing cooldowns here, and, uh, you know, Newt can do a huge amount of damage, actually, uh, just through extortion, and Watt can reduce turn meter. He also provides permanent taunt to Magnagard, and even if you do ignore Magnagard's taunt or somehow get rid of that, if you kill one of these separatists that is not Watt first, then Watt can just revive them. So it's an extremely sturdy team, really tough to deal with, and honestly, the this Vader team with Stormtrooper Han and Nihilus is kind of making it pretty easy. Like <laughs> so this was this was a really fast win and against a team that is extremely tricky to beat so uh, one of my favorite new teams i did i used that vader team with stormtrooper han and nihilus uh pretty recently uh in, in my last match as well went down in the same way so uh keep a lookout for that now here's a fun counter uh they they put this old republic team on defense and so i have i have kylo ren here He's going to be dazed forever. He's also going to be blinded forever. Uh, but I, he's Relic 7, and he, get, he gains power every time he gets hit, and he can he just does a massive amount. Now, one thing I, I wasn't really thinking very well here uh, during this match, I kept spamming his uh, specials. But honestly, one of the really strong things about him is if he uses his basic, he causes... Uh, healing immunity, and that, that not only would be helpful against Zalbar and Mission, who heal from uh, dots being applied and everything, and, you know, it makes them super resilient, it would also help me in my feet uh, collection. I, I, need, I need to get 30 debuffs, uh, you know, healing immunity debuffs, so uh, anyways, I, because he has his Zeta on him, he was uh, able to actually hit uh, with his special at the end and take out mission reviving all or restoring all of his protection and getting 56 banners so that that was pretty sweet and honestly that that was a pretty feel good win there uh, <laughs> using kylo didn't need him for anything else now there was this kira team with nest nest is only gear 12 and frankly i didn't have a great answer for them. I, I could take Jedi Training Ray, but as you'll see, I need her for later. I need some way to take out Nest, and all I could really think of was, what if I hit her really hard with Red Trooper sometimes? Um, which which isn't, uh, honestly, a very uh, great counter. I mean, it, it's fine, but you know, you, you can really get stuck against Nest, and so here I, you know, I figured I'd lost so many times, probably, you know, 
uh, my hope is that I'm going to be able to take out this team uh, with one shot. If not, at least I can get rid of Kira lead and, uh, you know, losing a, a, another time at this point, we don't want to lose. We, we truly don't. But if that becomes necessary, then I guess that, that becomes necessary. As it stands, 51 banners against that team. I don't think I would try that counter against something, uh, something significantly stronger. Frankly, uh, that, you know, that, that nest was only gear 12 and not very strong. I think a relic, even relic 1 nest would probably make me want to consider a different team. So uh, one, one team that I've kind of been neglecting in 3v3 is using Bastila with Jedi uh, to counter certain things. Now, uh, this, this Separatist team was actually kind of scary. The, you know, Poggle lead gives a huge amount of offense to these guys, and this Droidica is... Uh, high relic, uh, tough to beat, and we we just want to we want to end that Droidica before he one shots us. Bastil is a good counter because she gives a huge amount of bonus protection. So I uh, use her special when I could to uh, just stun the Droidica and get rid of his buffs, take care of Poggle, and now if we can just race to take out Droidica before he can actually go and one shot one of us. That would be great, of course. Uh, all my attempts to do that miss, and then he rolls up, but then Ahsoka has basic uh, dispel, so she's just able to get rid of that. And now we've taken so much time taking out Droidica and Poggle that Django no longer has damage immunity, and we can take him out relatively easily. He's only gear 12. My opponent had a strange roster, to say the least. Some of his characters were super high relic, some of them were not relic at all in points that I would have expected, so uh, that's one of them. And now uh, we've taken out that bottom zone entirely. Now we need to take out these two top squads. I, I do, I saved two of my favorite teams for this duty. Um, and frankly, I, I mean, we need we need to be able to use pretty strong squads here. The first one is a pretty standard Kylo Ren Unmasked First Order team. And for that, we're going to take Jedi Training Ray. And this match is all about control. How many turns can you prevent them from taking? Um, <laughs> that's kind of an awkward question because we have no idea how many turns they would take otherwise. But, um, you know, how how much can we just go if we can just take all the turns and they can take zero turns then it seems like we should be able to win and you know that's not always the case you know they're like if you have commander luke for instance against this team you can time out without them ever taking a turn because they're resilient like that however we do have one se secret weapon with jedi training ray which i guess is not secret she's been around for you know years at this point but her special allows her to uh just apply healing immunity and yeah uh that i mean that's all you need you need healing immunity and just some time some control and uh, one thing i will point out a lot of people have been reporting to me lately that uh the healing immunity is not actually going toward the feet on this team. I didn't actually test for myself, but that is a consideration if you guys are trying for the feet in the next fight. Uh, that This might not be a reliable source of that of healing immunity uh, debuffs for that. So uh, anyways, we, we've controlled pretty well. This wasn't the strongest Kylo Ren team. He's only Relic 4. The others were Gear 12, uh, but my Ray is only Relic 1. So, uh, unlike other people's rays who are overpowered because they had to unlock, uh, use, get them at relic seven to unlock ray, uh, that I don't have that. So 54 banners and it, it wasn't really that close. Now we have bounty hunters here with, and we're, we're going to just mirror match it, uh, with the exception of, I do have Django myself here at, rather than Dengar. I think in this situation you probably want Django, frankly. Um, and so the goal here, I wanted to get my contract as fast as I could and get a stun off on Boba if possible. Obviously, uh, didn't happen. So instead, I was able to get an execute off on J on Boba so that he couldn't revive. And now we're gonna get to the slog part. Uh, you know, Bosk is relic. He is really tough to do damage to. 
and he has all kinds of bonuses while he has protection and uh, both he and Dengar are both capable of helping him revive a ton of protection as well. So uh, the good news is I can use my various specials to get the healing immunity, uh, or at least attempt to get that for the feat. So I get that. Uh, and then the hope is that we can slowly whittle this team down. Once we get Bosk uh, past his huge stacked protection, then we can really start doing some actual good damage to him uh, because a lot of his bonuses go away once you take away all of his protection. Uh, you know, and that, that's easier said than done because Dengar is also uh, providing a bunch of healing, you know, in the form of his thermal detonators and the like, uh, but we did manage to eventually get Bosk at least down to only health, and then after that, if we can take enough turns, which my bounty hunters were significantly faster, if we can take enough turns, then hopefully we can just take him out. And that's that's exactly what happened. Now we have to hope that we can take out Dengar before he throws uh, more thermal detonators at us. And at the end, 53 banners is not something to complain about at all in that match. Happy to uh, get out unscathed. If that didn't work, I truly don't know if I would have been able to clear. Maybe I could have done some kind of shenanigans with probe droid or something, I don't know. So now, We've got this negotiator squad. Uh, it, it's kind of strange, and honestly, I, I was—I should say, like once, once my nest team just failed on me, I went into kind of a trance in a way. I, I don't know if that's quite the right word, but I went into this mental state of I'm just going to do this, and you know, I I, I went into like some hyper focused mode where. I just did every attack without uh, taking a long time to consider it, which is kind of counter to what I like to do on my main. I like to do one attack and then think about what's going to happen in the next one. Um, and the, this this match, I kind of just went one after another after another. And, you know, the, the reason I tell you this is I kind of just jumped into this mirror match without thinking about the turn order and the, you know, how to counter this. I've never really faced this. I've seen it at times, but I haven't really encountered it that much. And I think I probably could have had a better result if I had just sat down and thought about it. These three these three characters aren't tanks, really. Uh, you know, maybe Rex is classified as a tank or considered a tank, I don't know. But uh, as it stands, it maximizes their starting uh, turns. Uh, they get a lot more turns doing it. And so that... You know, that, that's not necessarily great for me, of course. I I don't know. I haven't given it much thought on how to counter it either. So uh, <laughs> I guess my bad in a way. Uh, this, this team does get quite a bit of... Uh, they do get quite a few turns. And I don't know. It, it's harder to take out than I had originally thought. You see that they're pretty close to gone at this point. None of my characters are really that close to dead either. Um... And, and so it seems like I'm probably going to get a pretty quick and easy win. Of course, uh, after that, Sunfac came in and he taunts. We can't do anything through his taunt. I don't have any AoEs available. So their Anakin's just going to get a ton of turns. And uh, things were looking pretty good. And then Sunfac came in and had to just try to ruin things. Uh, you know, eventually, of course, we can get through Sunfac and his shenanigans. But... Uh, like, I didn't even lose any ships, but I, I did drop quite a few banners. Uh, 58 is not something to be super proud of in ships. I, it, I'm glad I got the one-hit kill, of course, but uh, it's, per it's a pretty ugly final score. I've, I'm glad I full cleared. For a little bit, it was looking kind of grim, but, uh, you know, real quick before we show you the final score, I just want to show you my feats that I got. Uh, I've been getting the That's Impossible even for a computer feat. Um, and yeah, I've been working on feats, trying to get all of them done, of course, over time. And uh, so this is this score before my opponent attacked. My opponent took forever to attack. You see, he has one hour left uh, and finally attacked. And I thought that maybe he was still in the middle of his attacks when I uh, clocked in. But as it stood, I, I checked the results. And it looks like he stumbled on Minute team, which is not a Minute victory for me. So happy with that. In the back, 
the Asajj team with Spirit and Zombie defended four times without actually dying, so that was nice. And then uh, up top, they tried one time against my clones, couldn't even kill fives, and called it good. So, uh, pretty good defense. And just like that, I got the win. So, uh, <laughs> not the highest banner total, and definitely some stuff I can improve. Uh, you know, I, I need to look at the Ultimate Ray match a little bit, uh, watch some videos, maybe remod some stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, that's going to be tricky. But uh, otherwise, I'm happy. I got, I'm got i 4-0 right now, uh, and, you know, we're, we're on our road to Kyber and beyond so uh, that that's gonna be exciting my next match is going to pr provide an especially difficult challenge because uh, my opponent is not only really high lifetime banners they also missed an entire 3v3 week uh, so their, their th banners would be a lot better you know uh, yeah a ton better and and they they knew who i am they just did a random google search just to just to look me up on gac history and found my channel and subscribed so um yeah gonna gonna be tough and another ultimate ray and uh, i'm excited to play the match i'm excited to show you guys and uh yeah so i'm gonna sign off for now though I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, I would appreciate a like or a sub or both. Or uh, <laughs> I asked for a witticism in my alt account uh, video last time, and no one gave me any of them. Uh, I would I would like that too. Um, I'm greedy. So, <laughs> anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching, and remember that in all things, Zareth prevails. <laughs>